Good morning, folks, and welcome to Flaming Freedom, where we talk about LGBT issues from a liberty perspective. Some of you are listening to us via the Liberty Radio Network. We're so glad to be back with them. Our schedule finally coordinates in such a way that we can be on at a time and not conflict with other people. It's the only reason we weren't on it uh, for a period of time. We are also available to watch live via Ustream. If you go to flamingfreedom.com, you can click the live video stream link on the left side of the page. And start watching us that way if you are listening to us uh, live. We are broadcasting every Sunday morning from 10 a.m. to 2, sorry, 10 a.m. to noon Eastern Time. And if you're not listening to us during that time, that means you're listening to a rebroadcast or a downloaded podcast. Maybe next week you can join us. This is your host, Dale. And Lauren. And Jason. Thanks for joining us, Jason. Some of our best shows, I think, have been (laughs) with you. I was just watching one of our old YouTube videos that i edited together from a show you were on yeah and it's one of my favorite ones i've seen it over and over again by the way those of you who don't know about it we do have a youtube channel if you go to flamingfreedom.com we've got a a recent video posted called the physics of gay super speed which is some excerpts from last week's show and go check that out and hit subscribe i always tell people if you like the video hit subscribe so you can see future ones if you don't like the video subscribe so you can leave nasty comments on all our future videos (laughs) right that's my philosophy. So my first show was with you, or That's at least right. my first witnessing of a show. I wasn't actually on that night, but oh, okay, um, yeah. So you, you, your your shows are always a, always good ones. <laughs> so welcome back. <laughs> it's different doing it in the morning. This yeah, is different. Is. Yeah. yeah, you know though, it's way brighter. We for a long period of time we have not been live. We've been doing well. We were doing. You stream so people could watch us live if they wanted to, but we weren't live via Liberty Radio Network. And by the way, we are taking calls via Skype. So you can you can Skype us at In Your Head Shows. All you have to do is make a Skype account if you don't have one. It's free if you just want to use it to call other Skype users. So Skype us at In Your Head Shows if you want to join the conversation at any point, if you have a comment to make about anything. Today's Urban Dictionary Word of the Week is fapidextrous. Yes, we were just talking about that. And we actually, if you go on UrbanDictionary.com or whatever the website is, you'll actually see that the definition involves Jason's name. That's right. Mm-hmm. They use me as an oh. example. Yeah. Well, that's a perfect example, really. Fapidextrous, the ability to masturbate with equal efficiency using either hand. And the example they gave, I'll let you read the example. Oh, you can't. I You're can't. Not, oh, yeah. you can't. Lauren, go, read it. Go for it, Jason. Jason oh. broke his right arm on the slopes. Thank goodness he is fapidextrous. His fapping will not be interrupted. There you go. I don't ski, though, so that's a problem, but I am fapidextrous. I start off with my offhand. You start I, with your offhand? Yeah. I and usually, then you finish strong. I feel like I need to, I feel like I need to be even, kind of. Which, which yeah, and then <laughs> finish strong. Right, exactly. Oh, well, that's clever. I, I'm, I frequently try to switch arms, and, and you know, I know when I'm in the gym, I'm careful to try and make sure I'm not neglecting right. my off arm. So if you, your off arm, if you're left-handed, you start with your right hand? Is that how it goes? Or If I were left-handed, yeah. So if you forget. That's, de- that's demon stuff. You know, if, someone, if you're left-handed, it's a devil thing, right? Well, I, you know, really? I, I thought that was your thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get into that a little Wait, later. If if you forget to switch hands, though, do you walk around the rest of the day just kind of uncomfortable, like thinking about how the other hand hasn't fapped yet, and you got to just find a moment later in the day, even it out? That's a good um, question. Can I ask a question to, to you guys? Does anybody ever use both at the same time? Like, like it would be like a fapping threesome, right? I have. I'm not thing? really. Uh, it's, it, it doesn't really work for me. Okay. That's, I, 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 <laughs> that's weird. Why did that go off just now? So your l- little LRN reminder thing, I, I pushed it because it was it was just ringing at me, and so we Jason and I were trying to stop it. Anyway, oh, um, fapidextrous. All right, you 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 snoozed it probably. Oh, I snoozed <laughs> it. That's that's what I do. <laughs> or I did. I can't imagine not being fapidextrous. Really, like who right. who can't use both hands? That's not anyway. Pop right into the mic. People with one arm. <laughs> oh, that's true. I'm sorry. Jason's a little that, rusty. That was hasn't insensitive. Been there in a while. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. What the hell, man? One aren't people. That's true. Yeah. And or no aren't people. They have to use their feet. Wow. You have to get limber. Well, mm. if they can paint, you have those people who can paint with their feet, right? Or their mouth. I've seen a woman who's who's quadriplegic paint with her mouth, and she's excellent. She's way better than I will ever be as an artist. Right. I don't know. Even if I was quadriplegic, if I'd have the patience to do that. And if you, uh, I, well. 
I think I'd get limber if I had to. If I was quadriplegic, I would get <laughs> okay. limber because I would find a way. Well, if you're quadriplegic, you probably can't feel that part anyway. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> some some paraplegic can't. Paraplegics can, depending on exactly how they were affected. But it depends. Some paraplegics can't feel it either. Hmm. Which I can't. It, it sucks. But there's, you know. So there's a ton of show prep today. Yes, there is a lot. There, I, I have, like, I, I, I've been getting so much stuff. Yeah, that I, I have a whole list of stuff it. that I don't even post anymore. Because you, you're know. just like filling it up with all of this cool, exciting stuff. Well, you should go ahead and post it. I may end up picking your stuff over my stuff. But, and, well, and we usually don't get to everything that's in the show prep. Let me just give you a heads up, folks. If you see it in our show prep and we don't get to it, it's just because there's so much stuff that I want to talk about and we don't have time. And you're certainly that. welcome to call in and set us straight and get us back on track. Yeah, or just change the subject. If you, if you really want to, let's get some shout outs going. I want to shout out to Brett of the school sucks project. We're going to link to him on today's show. He helped us out in the terms of, uh, I was having problems with video and he took some personal time to help me through that, which is great. His show, I, f- I feel like saying the main difference between his show and our show is effort. Like he actually puts effort. <laughs> in his show. So, uh, and it shows uh, well, and that, what I mean by that, you, Dan, honestly, you put a lot of effort into this I show. I do, but it's not my full time job. Whereas that show for him is his full time sure. job. Yeah. This is a part time job for me. It really is that I don't get paid for. Uh, and that's okay. Um, you know, you can make a, do- a donation or something if you want to. Well, we're, uh, we're very open to that. But just, just tell people about the show. Click like on our shows and Ooh. on our YouTube videos and share them on Facebook and. Twitter and stuff. Speaking and, of shout outs, can, we'll can I actually... It. But check out Joe, uh, Brett's show, School Sucks Project. It's a really good show. I do have something to say about liking stuff on Facebook. I'm not that good at Facebook yet. I'm still kind of new to the whole thing. Um, but apparently, I didn't like Flaming Freedom. I was like an admin on the Flaming right. Freedom website. And I, I invited didn't even, you to like it. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> oh, wait, I, of course I like Flaming Freedom. Uh, and so if you... My message here, folks, is if you have not... Even if you think you have liked Flaming Freedom... You need to go ahead and just log in and check and make sure that right. you actually liked it. Because not, I thought that I did, and I, I had no idea that I... And not only that, but not. then scroll down and click and check notifications, or you might not get notifications most of the time. Yeah. I think that's supposed to help. I still don't think it necessarily means you get all of them. Facebook is getting very complicated. They mean so, for it to be. They don't yeah. want you to actually be... You can, in theory, control the stuff you get. But it's no. so complicated that they know most people aren't going to do it. So that Facebook is still going to control the content that you see. And usually it's not going to be, like, if you like Flaming Freedom, you'll maybe get 5% of our notifications. And we don't send out that many. It's not like you're going to get spammed if you get 100% of them. We don't abuse that. So uh, you might you won't even get something every day from us. But you might get, you know, three or four a week, maybe. And that's only if you're getting all of them, which means go and check off notifications. That, that, that will help. I don't know if it'll fix it all together. I feel like J.J. Abrams. we got some cool lens layers going on right here. Uh, oh, I love those. The artifacts. Makes it so, mu- oh. so much better, right? Optics. Yeah. Optics. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So Sorry. The other announcement is we're going to be live <laughs> at Porkfest. The other uh, quickie for today is we're going to be live at Porkfest. Just from, three weeks away is Porkfest. Right. And Just, we'd love for you to join wow. us at some point for that. Which day up, are you doing Saturday it? Saturday from 11 to 1 in the morning. The afternoon, morning to afternoon. Oh, okay. 11 a.m. Okay. So it's, it's you know, you can still sleep in some. I'll have to see. I know. It's after a Friday night at Porkfest, well, which I'm, is yeah. rough. I'm moving the next day on like Monday or Tuesday. So okay. I don't even know if I'm going to be there the whole last weekend. Oh, well, stay we'll at least see. long for, for Pork Fest. Stay at least for the show because everyone's <laughs> going to want to meet you, right? Yeah. All your fans are going to mm. want to meet you. So those are our announcements that I wanted to make sure we got out. And uh, some of the things we're going to talk about is uh, a lady who killed her kids, Abraham style. Uh, inspired With a by knife the, on top of a mountain? Uh, inspired by the Abraham story. Did she uh, climb a, a mountain? Uh, she was inspired by the Abraham she story. She was inspired. <laughs> right. And so she killed her kids. And then... Um, and uh, we've got, we're going to talk about Satanism again, about why we should or should not talk about it. Oh, Whether this or not is Mr. So Peanut uplifting. is a cross dresser, uh, my beef with why gays should be libertarian, and more when we come back. You're listening to Flaming Freedom on the Liberty Radio Network. Stay tuned. I asked some of the biggest fans of Flaming Freedom where we discuss LGBT topics from a liberty perspective, what sorts of things they'd done to support the show. I've been mining butt coins since they were pennies apiece. I've donated thousands of dollars of butt coin to Flaming Freedom. I gave Dale my handicap placard. Pretty sure that's a felony. We handed over our firstborn. I don't 
know what they're up to with that boy, but I'm sure it's wholesome. There's too many buttons. I don't know which button you want me to push. I told you already it's a knob. Raise the gain on microphone too, you worthless brat. I have flamingfreedom.com tattooed across my labia. And I'm a prostitute, so all my clients see it. Wow, that's something. But there's a much easier way to show your appreciation. Just click like and share the episodes on your favorite social media networks. Oh, here we go with the wanting and the needing. And can you do this for me? And can you do that for me? My index mouse finger is all achy from the gout. I can't be We do put a lot of work into making a good show for you. Please just click like and share. That's all we ask. Welcome back, folks, and thank you for listening to Flaming Freedom, where we talk about LGBT issues from a liberty perspective sometimes, and sometimes I just describe us as libertarians, LGBT libertarians shooting the poop. However, uh, we actually have a not LGBT person and a not today. libertarian as and well. Not, are you uh. not libertarian? You say you have a libertarian perspective. I, I, I guess so, maybe. I All appreciate right, libertarians. This is Dale. And Lauren. And Jason. Tell us what do you mean by you're not being, why, well, how are you not I, a libertarian? Well, I just live in New Hampshire and there's a bunch of people who call themselves libertarians who come on over and say, hey, we're cool people. And I'm like, yeah, you are. And I love you guys. But I, I haven't right. ever like called myself a libertarian or I didn't move to New Hampshire because of libertarianism. Well, or that anything. would mean you're not a free state project member. That is true. You're really a pre-stater because you lived here before, right? You didn't move yes, here for the free state yes. project. So you're a pre-stater. Mm-hmm. That's the affectionate term for you folks that I we like have. That. That's cute. Now, and but now, why do you say you're not a libertarian? Because I don't know what that is. Really, I have to know what I am. It to, means to that say you, what I am. That's a fair you answer. B- fairly, you have a fairly strong belief in the non-aggression principle. If I had to describe it in very short terms, that's what I would say. See, would I you, do you believe in aggression and using aggression against innocent people? Well, I'm sort of a pacifist. Um, but okay. I don't believe in aggression. I don't know. I, I'm not really into the nap. Sounding kind of libertarian. I have to me. I have problems with the non-aggression principle. Okay, like what? Like when would you say it's okay to violate the non-aggression principle? Uh, this is what not are your cool. exceptions. I, I, you just caught me totally off guard. I, I cannot. <laughs> she wasn't this. It's more fun that way. Yeah, it thanks, really is thanks, more fun. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, like sometimes. Uh, it's not that simple. It's not like you, you can't just live your life saying like that you're not going to No, I I'm not going to have this conversation right now. This is not this is not gay. This is totally <laughs> this is not, not gay. gay. <laughs> this is a libertarian show as much as it is an LGBT uh, show. Uh. It really is. I mean, I know it gets overlooked sometimes because frequently we'll go through an entire show and not really address particularly a liberty well, all right. subject. Although usually when we're talking about LGBT things, that's there's a lot of well, it just it it just tends to go that direction because it's such a big part of of who we are. Yes, when we discuss. So I'm very pro peacefulness and kindness, and 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 you know I'm a very loving person. But I think that sometimes we might say things or do things that are that are actually considered aggressive acts, and we don't mean to actually be aggressive. Okay. So I, I think that the the non aggression principle it's not that simple. It's not just like you have complete control over your own mind and body. I'll tell and, you when I will violate it. Do you want to know an exception yeah, of mine? That would be great. If I see a little kid who doesn't know very well, he isn't good at paying attention to cars in the street and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and he starts to run out in front of a car. That's a beautiful I will example. snatch him out from the street and in, in, in an aggressive and violent manner. Not well. Not, I don't know if you call that violent. Obviously not trying to hurt him, but uh, I'd rather grab him and jerk him out than the car hit him. Jerk him out. <laughs> Bite me, Jason. Uh, so <laughs> go ahead. Get, go ahead. Get the pedos started. Get them yeah, yeah. going. Yeah. Those LGBTs and their pedos. Anyway. Um, yeah. I will snatch the bait. I'll snatch the kid out of the car and that will be an act of aggression. Although some people, you know, that, that, that's getting into the whole winter people able, c- capable of consent. Like he he's not he's he's too young to know not to walk out in the street. So there's you know you're just exercising a reasonable exception to the non-aggression principle. And I'm sure there's libertarians out there who are gonna who are so religious about the non-aggression principle they'll try to contrive an explanation how that's not aggression. It technically I, is. I think it's a great a goal to strive towards, but I don't think it can be accomplished as best as we want it to be. Okay. At this point in time. What if anyway. the little kid was trying to We're kill himself? Give you, we'll give you until next week to think of your exceptions to the non-aggression principle. I thought you just thought of a very excellent exception. Okay. 
Okay, so I would say that, that, well, I consider myself libertarian, despite having those feelings about snatching kids out from in front of cars. So, um, it sounds but you too don't, political, like, though. Like, it just sounds too... I, I agree, but that's why I frequently say I'm a small L libertarian and not a big mm. L libertarian. I'm not a member of the Libertarian Party. I, go ahead. I don't know. I, uh, I moved here just because I like to be around people who think like that. I, I, don't, I don't spend I a lot of time, I agree. Uh, you know, philosophizing or trying to convince people. I don't anymore, except for like right now on the show and things like that. I mean, generally, I get very tired of these discussions. Yeah, Because I've, I've had it. I mean, I loved it when I first moved to New Hampshire because I wasn't getting that. I was yeah, around yeah. people who didn't feel that way. And so I get to New Hampshire, and that's all you're talking about for a while, and you're just eating it up. Yeah. But after uh, about a year or two of that, I'm sick of it. I'm like, yeah. I don't... I, can we talk about the latest movie? Or <laughs> After a while, it, gets, it does get old. I realize that. All right. So we're going to talk about stuff. Mm. Yep. That's the plan. Um, that's why we're here. It's a talk show. So the Christian derp of the week is this lady who killed her toddler. She tried to kill her other kid too and failed. Thank goodness. And so her, her, she was inspired. She had just gone to church and her preacher had just told the story of Abraham and how he proved his, his faith in the Lord and his obedience to the Lord by uh, agreeing to kill his son, have a uh, sacrifice his son to the Lord. Yeah, but God stopped him before he did it, right? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Well, here's the problem. There is no this God. Lady said, this lady said, well, God didn't stop me. <laughs> he didn't stop me. And yeah, exactly. There's the problem. There isn't actually a God to stop her. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't understand that this is a fable. It's not for reals. There's not actually a And that magical, Bible has some good stories. Sky Daddy. Yeah, it's got some cool stuff. Some, it's, it's some fucked up stuff. Yeah. But the, you know, it kind of fits. Really if you look at up. like um, fairy tales, there's some fucked up fairy tales. Right, yeah, Aesop's most fairy fables tales. and uh, not well. Some of Aesop's fables, Aesop's fables, we, but but Grimm's fairy tales and things like that. There's some pretty messed up stuff in there, and those are all like things that are meant to scare you away from doing certain things you're not supposed to do. So it's fine as long as you understand that God is a fairy tale, so a fairy tale character. Did she take the baby up to the top of a mountain? No. Well, no wonder God didn't but, speak to oh, her. Duh. She was too far away. She yeah. was outside of the Wi-Fi range. Uh, come on. <laughs> Moses that had, was her derp. Moses had to go up a mountain for the tablets, didn't he? Right. That he, was her Christian. You got to get up mountains to talk with the dude. Her Christian derp was she didn't go high enough mm. to hear God when he was going to say, yeah. "No, no, 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 stop, stop." You have all those monks yeah. in Asia. They live in the mountains, meditating all all the time. I'm telling you, it, right? In a suicide note, she reports that unlike the biblical account of Abraham, God did not step in and stop her from taking her child's life. An okay. excerpt from the note reads, Lee's sermon really, really touched me yesterday. <laughs> but God never told me to stop. Wait, she killed herself? Um, you said a suicide No, I don't note. think she succeeded at that. Uh, uh, let, me, let me make sure. Um, they'd raised a boy and a girl. She failed at k- killing the boy. She was uh, attending a sermon at the Metropolitan Community Church. Which, by the way, MCC is a... I thought that was a gay church. I thought MCC was a gay church, so that that doesn't... You know, you're still crazy if you go to a gay church, apparently. Are there there, <laughs> are there churches that are entirely I gay? MC, I thought MCC was... Uh, yeah, I never was, heard of such a thing. Yeah. I thought MCC was primarily started to... to uh, it was one of the few churches that... It was, it was started I, specifically I, to allow gay might, people in. You might be thinking I of thought. U- UCC, actually. No, that's different. The Universalist. Pretty, well, anyway, Brown... Well, there's, yeah. Let's see... How so can many you, religions. How can you believe in any sort of Christianity and be and and be homosexual? I be- I don't know. <laughs> it just well, actually, that, that because you can. Christ never said like gay people suck. There's like, actually that didn't happen. there's some very good arguments by by LGBT Christians for why you can in fact be a gay and hmm. Christian. Uh, I'm not going to do it because I'm. Uh, it feels silly <laughs> because Ooh. I'm not a Christian. Thank you for listening, folks. We're going to be back in just a little bit, so stick around. Just a few more minutes, and Flaming Freedom will return. Good morning, and thank you for listening to Flaming Freedom. Some of you are listening to us via the Liberty Radio Network. Some of you are listening and watching us via Ustream, and some of you are listening to the downloaded podcast. You can listen to us or watch us live next week, Sunday, noon to 2 Eastern Time, either the Liberty Radio Network or Ustream. Noon Uh, to 2 or 10 to noon? Oh dear! It's, it's, yeah, it's, did I say that? You said it's noon 10, to two. ten a.m. to twelve p.m. Yes, ten a.m. to noon Eastern time. Eastern time. I apologize. Thank you for catching that. Uh, I'm about to confuse a lot of people. 
So, uh, also, I want to make sure you know that we are on Facebook, facebook.com slash Flaming Freedom. Go like us there, and then scroll down and click notifications underneath the like button uh, to get more of our notifications. You can also see us on Google+, Plus, Diaspora, Twitter, and YouTube. Go check out our YouTube channel and, and subscribe there. So, we, were, we just finished talking about this lady who killed her kids. Because uh, she was inspired by the Abraham story, where he was told to sacrifice his son Isaac. Was yeah, it Isaac. I think it was Isaac. Yes. And so he's like, okay. And then God stopped him and said, "Oh, you just—I was just testing you. I just yeah. wanted to see if you're actually an absolute mindless fanatic, because uh, those are the kind of followers that I need. <laughs> are absolute mindless fanatics who do not use the reason that supposedly God gave them to uh, come to reasonable conclusions about morality." And things like that. Like you shouldn't sacrifice your children to gods. Any gods. Like I think that's a reasonable moral. Do you think Abraham learned that yeah. lesson or no. no. He learned to be obedient. That's yeah. that's really and that's what that's the whole point of that of that Bible passage as far as I can tell. Of that um particular fable from the Bible. <laughs> uh so there you go. So as long as we're on the subject of uh ridiculous morality, like Christian morality and stuff like that. Last week we talked about Satanism and why we should or should not talk about it. We did. What do you mean and not Lauren did talk not, about it? I think uh, we should Lauren talk about it. Lauren doesn't want me to bring it up. No, we should talk about it. You should bring it up. We should talk about it. Well, that, that was the whole debate. That was the whole but, discussion was whether we should talk about well, it. Well, why would you not talk about it? Well, do you, you remember I, I way agree. back I'm to the, the eight crucial sins thing? Uh-huh. And how like weird it was for most people because it's like oh sin sinfulness is bad so why would you call something that's good something that's bad why would you call rational thinking satanism wait was that one of the sins no no it wasn't one of the sins <laughs> you, were, I, you were on that show i know like i think six, i was six or seven yeah. months ago i still feel state. like you guys i i explained that and you guys i still don't feel like you i don't know because I think language is well, important you better review it give us the rundown real quick I think there's a, I think it is the most, it is the most honest way to talk about it is that, is that Christianity takes things that are completely normal and healthy and part of our biology, for instance, and tries to make them sound like they're, like they're evil in order to attempt to, to control people. And to call them sins in the first place is pretty ridiculous. I mean, certainly you can say like too much of something to the point that it's unhealthy is bad for you, but that's something else than calling it a sin. So certainly, I, I, I it, see, here's the thing. I, I feel like I need to give you a chance to talk because you feel like last week you didn't get that. I, no, I just feel like... I can hold my thought if you want to no, get some more No, you're out. certainly welcome to go okay. ahead. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Here's the thing. It, I, if I, I, like you, you just sort of accuse me of trolling. And I, and I joke sometimes that I'm trolling. I accuse Satanists of trolling. Okay. Fair enough. And some of them do things like rituals where they turn a dead person gay, and they're obviously not believing. Really? You can do that? <laughs> no. Yeah, but they, you can't. You didn't but they do that? rituals like that in order to get attention and to draw attention to something. And that and they're kind of trolling, you can say. But here's the thing. There, I mean, there's something, too. The word trolling has such broad meaning in different contexts. And I often say I'm trolling, but I'm kind of joking about that. I'm mostly just being brutally honest, which I think is the best form of communication. And sometimes it's completely called for. When someone is so indoctrinated into a certain point of view, I really want to shock them out of that. You, you have to really rock the boat that they're comfortably sitting in to get them to start thinking in different terms. And when I call them the eight crucial sins, yes, I don't really believe they're sins. Wait, but what that's what everyone knows them as. And, I totally, and that's why I flip it and say the crucial sins. Because these are totally normal things, like lust. Yeah. is absolutely crucial to the survival of the human species. Yeah. We would not exist today if our ancestors had not lusted. Same with avarice. All these things are crucial to life itself. Yeah. And that's why I call Christian a death-worshipping cult. Mm. It, worship, it, believes that it worships on the basis of an afterlife that doesn't actually exist, that is eternal and makes this life a minuscule little drop yeah. in the bucket of time. In the ocean of time, which isn't true, and so people end up neglecting this life, which is the only life they have, and and everything about this life that motivates us to do things, they call them sins. 
So what? So that's what why it, I call them crucial sins in order to just rock the right. boat that you're saying. I like, I like that. So, but then where does Satanism come in? Well, how does this discussion turn into not talking about Satanism? Because uh, frankly, Satan. Here's the thing. Let's let's give a quick uh, vocabulary yeah, lesson. Yeah, go ahead. Satan means the adversary. It's not a name. Yeah. It became a name because Christians decided that. The adversary was the opponent of God, which is, which is they're both fictional characters, God and the adversary. It's also fictional. it's also a tofu substitute, right? <laughs> Although that's Satan. Okay. I'm sorry. Go I ahead. I didn't know that. Thank you. Yeah. That's more a mm. more vocabulary lesson for our <laughs> listeners. So Satan means the adversary. It's not a name. It's only started to become to be start it came to be used as a name relatively recently. Uh, and in fact the the biblical word that's being used is means the adversary and Satan is a word that sort of I think I did that. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> and uh, Lucifer is a god. As a means the but, refers to the morning star, the brightest star. Yeah, brightest he star was an at angel that you still see before morning. Yeah. No. Wasn't he? No. In the mythology. Be- no. <laughs> no. He really, that be- that happened later. Oh, really? Anything that is not God. Remember, any gods that people worship that were not God, they're all called Satan. Now, they're all believed to be Satan by Christians because Christians are demonizing anything that conflicts with their religious views. At least in modern times, that's what Christians right. tend to do it's when a, they yeah. don't like something. They call it Satanism or the hell or the devil or whatever. Right. And so it is a relatively recent phenomenon for the term Lu- for the name Lucifer to be equated with also Satan or God's adversary. No, that, that's also well, a, what do you mean by relatively recent, like recent a few thing. hundred years, right? Yeah, yeah. Because you got in paradise but, uh, lost long after the Bible was written. Right? Oh yes. yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. Uh, you know, yes. a lot of things. Uh, a lot of these things are later. So, so when Anton Lavey is being critical of Christianity, and for very good reason, it's a who's dominant... Anton Lavey? He wrote the Satanic Bible. Oh, oh, that name sounds familiar. Yes. Okay, okay. So you'll hear it called sometimes Lavey and Satanism. Lavey, uh, the Church of Satan. Yeah. is what Anton Lavey started. Now you... he proclaims to be an atheist. He says yeah. he's an atheist. So Satan for him is a symbol, and it represents how Christian re- morality is so messed up. You know, so I think it's I've, a critique of Christian morality. I, I, I'm really. not sure if it was a proper Satanism or if it was a, some sort of pagan, but I, I've been to a formal formal church ceremony of a of of, of, of Satanists. They had a naked woman and everything, giving out wine, and, oh, nice. and they prayed to like everything from Jesus and Satan to like Thomas Crowley and all these other weird historical figures. Huh, okay. Uh, Thomas Crowley? Thomas? No, Crowley. But, right. Uh, uh, anyway, I think that the first. I think it, yeah. Alistair Crowley. Alistair Crowley. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yes. yeah. Yes. It was weird, but they were very friendly people. Hmm. I've never had a naked woman give me wine before. I didn't participate. I just oh, observed. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was with some religious studies major. So, in summary, what I was getting <laughs> at, what, the, what I was essentially getting at was, in summary, when you call me, when you say I'm trolling. Then it, it's it's saying I'm insincere and I'm not insincere. No, I I know you're. Or sincere. implies you're, that I'm insincere. So right. Why don't I, you want to talk about Satanism, Lauren? Well, I I was saying that language is important, and I think that if you say like, oh, I I am a Satanist, that infuriates a lot of people, and they're not going to listen to you. But now I I sort of understand that you're saying that you do it specifically to really get people jarred up, so that they they stop and they look around and they say, wait. Why am I so jarred up? That, like, so that there are people who have some level of rational thought who can say to themselves, gosh, I'm getting really riled up over this. <laughs> Should I be? And then they stop and they think. Like, sometimes, yeah. like, just like you talked about, you know, hitting that kid out of, the, out of the street earlier, like, that's the level of shock that you're trying to achieve. And so I understand why you've chosen the language, even though it may not... Uh, logically fit yeah. the way I see. And I always say I'm not so much trying to shock, but I am trying to jar, uh, yeah, jar people out of uh, some really deeply indoctrinated thinking. You are listening to Flaming Freedom, and we're going to be back very shortly, so stay tuned. We are back. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for skipping church and being blasphemous to listen to our show instead. So you're sort of listening to you're sort of going to church. You're you're attending the Church of Satan this morning. No, because we're talking about Satanism and and all that stuff. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Oh gosh! <laughs> so yeah, I'm an I'm I'm agnostic really. Uh, close enough. I'm atheist. I'm 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 actually a lot of atheists would consider me atheist because I'm what you'd call a weak atheist. Meaning, I, I don't believe in God. You don't exercise very much. Well, and it depends on how broadly you define God, though, too. Because you can get into, like, Alan Watts, who was an atheist, 
but also very spiritual. And he kind of got into concepts like the void, what which is, seems is that, kind of godlike. Is but that like not science really. is God? Sort of. Uh, it's he just sort of explores the concept of consciousness and what it means. So, listeners, if you're still listening, like I'm not a Satanist, so you can you can continue to listen, and I'll I'll okay. try to speak up for you. Listen on your for behalf. Lauren. She's your advocate, and she will defend you. This is your host, Dale, and Lauren, and Jason. So we talked about that. I think we're going to put it to rest for now, but it'll come up again at some point. Of course, Satan always does. I mentioned. Uh, <laughs> Uh, one of the th- yes. things that I linked in our show prep, though, which we can cover briefly, is that um, there's many Christians who still literally believe in demons and Satan, and this was, I listed as that, a reason why you should, you should, uh, we should actually talk about Satanism. That, that just sounds so stressful, being worried about those things oh, all the yeah. times, right? Yeah. I, mean, I know, I have a friend who's like really bothered by the uh, paranormal. Um, what a waste of energy. Those, 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 um, those at home cam webcam sort of or security cam oh, footage. He keeps those running to look for ghosts no, and shit? no no but paranormal activity right it's yeah. fictional but that's really scary to them because they believe in that stuff i don't believe in it so it doesn't scare me <laughs> right <laughs> I, I i'm much more scared by movies about psychotic killers because those are real they're out there i worry and about people them really all the crazy. time yeah yeah you're well, out in some big sh- farmhouse in the middle of the woods all by yourself yeah well, i'm not worried about satan while we're on it uh elliot jordan <laughs> Is it Jordan? Elliot Jordan? I don't know. The crazy who that guy? Is. Oh, oh, no. that's the dude. That's, the, du- that's the dude. I keep getting his last name Should wrong. I think it's Jordan. Yeah. This is the guy that, that feminists are latching on to because he was a misogynist. Are you, ta- are you talking about Elliot Rogers? Is it Rogers? Thank, thank you. I the, know, the, the asshole who killed a bunch of people. He killed a bunch by, of people. And by gentlemen, I mean asshole, yes. Yeah. Well, he, you, was, he was. I don't even want to call him an asshole. He was crazy. Yeah. Absolutely off I think his you can be crazy, crazy and an asshole. I think that works. Yeah, sometimes that's why you're an asshole because mm. you're, he was an asshole because he was crazy. Well, to me, I was just I just I want to mention him briefly. Briefly, he killed a lot of people. He killed more men actually than he killed women. But he has become the misogynist s- symbol, the symbol of misogynism and how misogynism kills. And I feel like it's just completely putting the cart before the horse to say he was killing people because he was misogynist. He was killing people because he was crazy, and he was a misogynist because he was crazy. And he was really misogynist. Looney Tunes. Like, there's no debate. He is a misogynist. Now, he wanted to put women in, in uh, when, uh, by what camps By what and, age do you think misogyny is ingrained in your psyche to the, to the point that later on you'll turn into a psycho killer? Well, I don't know. I, I actually don't even know that he really was a misogynist. No, that came later. He was crazy and I, narcissist and... Uh, he was a he had he had all these issues going on and became misogynist. You don't so think don't the like misogyny was a seed in him no, already? Not really? at all. I think misogyny came later after he went. Nuts. Yeah. In fact, I think he, he probably was. Uh, he, misogyny means hatred of women. I don't think he hated women prior. I think he actually really liked women. Uh, so much, maybe so much so. I even you know I even well, think he's he was obsessive. He was obsessive. He, he, he was a little he, effeminate himself. So I I think he maybe even had some like trans issues to deal with. But that's you know we all we all say like our own issues. We all put our own issues on. Bit. We project onto <laughs> right these yeah. these people, and. And you're able to do it with him so much more, though, because he left all this video, right? So everybody... Oh, and 140 pages manifesto. It's crazy. Where he talked about how women should be put in concentration camps so they won't tempt men, and sex was evil. He decided to say he hated sex, too. What's the word for that? I don't know. Sex was evil, and it would corrupt men. I don't... And so he wanted women... Let me get this out. Our our listeners are on the edge of their seats wanting to know what he wanted to do. So he wanted to put women in concentration camps... He wanted to, so they wouldn't tempt men, and he wanted to make sex illegal. Uh, he wanted to decide who would get to reproduce, and it would all happen by artificial insemination. He was abs- He was definitely a misogynist, but like all this crazy came before the misogyny. But well, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But the, no, so say he say he had found a woman and gotten married. How do you know he would have been some psycho husband with the same philosophy? I think the misogyny was underlying the craziness. I don't know that if you've. You don't seem to know that much about him. You're just well, jumping to that conclusion. No, I, I think you might be right, though. It's it's sort of just a hatred of people in general. And if 50% of those people also are women, then therefore he could get labeled as a misogynist. Like, 
Oh, he you, is you a don't just, well, like, Absolutely, don't, but he's also a, a misandrist as well, I'm sure. I don't, some, yeah, some I don't think a switch just changes in your brain and then one year you decide to start writing page after page of misogyny. I feel like that stuff is it, boiling yeah. under there for many, many years. Maybe maybe before you start making these judgments about why he is the way he is, read 140 pages of manifesto. No, I'm not. Some people have done that and talked about it online, or, or at watch least it. watch them summarize it, because... He really, there just there is this progression that appears to have happened, and I'm only speaking from people who kind of summarized it for me. I haven't read his manifesto, but uh, it, it, there appears to have been this progression that happened, and uh, and a lot of things where he was cracking and going nuts, and uh, a lot of it, he, people were picking on him, uh, guys were picking on him, and he was being mocked and and stuff for being a virgin and all these things. And he was already a little nuts. He was definitely, he definitely had some underlying like problems. Like he was diagnosed, I believe, as Asperger's. So he, mm. he socially had issues. And then he thought he was wonderful, or at least he had to convince himself that he was because everyone else was putting him down so much. So he had narcissism issues, all this stuff. And then you're to well, try and say that at the base of, of drugs, it, right? Trying to say at the foundation of that was that he was misogynist, and then everything else followed is is I think absurd. No, no, that's not what now. I'm saying. You're not hearing me. I'm not saying that the misogyny was the f foundational principle. I'm saying that it it didn't just like it was part of his personality along with this sociopathy. Like, I think it emerged out it, of his narcissism and other crazy tendencies and, and, yeah. and, and being rejected and his self-esteem just being whittled away and he was looking for someone to blame for that. Yeah. You know, he, he was looking for, he wanted, he had to convince him. It sounded like he's narcissist in the sense that he's trying to convince himself that he's this wonderful person and it's, it's uh, while everyone else is tearing him down. He had people bullying him and all this stuff. And he was crazy all, to start with, and it all just compounded. Yeah. And a bunch of things came out of that: narcissism, hatred of everybody, uh, hatred of women, uh, all that because he was attracted to them and they were rejecting him, and and all this stuff. Yeah. He was he was loopy as hell. That's true. He was on a lot of drugs too, wasn't he? I don't know for sure about that. I was pretty sure That's I creepy. read that he was on. I, I really don't know. What mm. gets me is that, and of course, the other thing is the anti-gun folks are hopping on board. He's a great spokes. He's a great poster child for that right because he did kill yeah, some people. he killed a bunch of people guns with were too. legally possessed weren't they yeah in a, in a state that has some pretty tight gun laws so... already we just need more of them though that means there weren't enough right? enough guns there weren't enough gun laws enough laws oh. it, it, we weren't restricted enough hmm. that was that's the logic meanwhile, that would be one retarded co conclusion you can meanwhile to. his parents his own parents were saying he's dangerous <laughs> Uh, from what I understand, and people weren't listening to them. Cops actually investigated. He was actually investigated. People were saying, this dude's crazy. And the cops investigated and went, nah, nah, he's fine. But the problem was guns. Not crazy. <laughs> I, I want to get a gun. That's one of my goals this summer. I'm going to buy my first gun. Oh, what kind? I want to get a revolver, I think. But oh, I, that's very classic. Very Yeah, I'm kind of old-fashioned well. like that. Mm -hmm. But I haven't actually shot a revolver yet, so I, I want to get in some practice and see if I actually okay. enjoy it. I had one for a while, and I decided that I didn't want the responsibility that comes with it. Well, that's the other thing. I, I need to take a good class before. I mean, I've had a, some private lessons yeah. with some friends. But. I've had quite a few lessons in terms of shooting and handling a gun safely and all those things. But still... I didn't feel prepared for a stressful situation when I would have to decide right. whether or not I was going to shoot someone. I don't think I would carry it on me, but like, uh, I don't know. It's a good investment. Good to have it around. I don't know if I go out into the back country, go camping in the woods, you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it'd be easier for me to shoot an animal, but uh, I'm, I'm afraid that someone would startle me. I want to go hunting too, which I'm excited yeah. about moving to New Hampshire for. There's a lot of that kind of culture up here, and I'm sure before too long I can find someone to I think show me how to down hunt. play the the responsibility that comes with carrying a gun all the time. I think a lot really? of people who are really pro-gun don't really think about... They're not really... You need to spend a lot of time, I think, if you're going to carry a gun all the time, you should be spending a lot of time training yourself on knowing when to fire when you have two seconds. The if gun that, advocates I know when seem... To pull your gun and fire it. Seem pretty, um, the gun advocates I know seem pretty... Um conscious about responsible you know being responsible i, I don't know are they are they going are, are they training regularly not just at a range but like know. in a in a military style not military is necessary but like in a combat style situation i have no idea and now they're not most of them are some of them are but most of them mm. are 
This is Dale at Flaming Freedom. We're going to be back shortly. This is LGBT Libertarian shooting the poop. Stick around. Is Mr. Peanut a cross-dresser? No. That is the question. Check out those leggings. You're saying no? I, I have experience with this. You are listening to Flaming Freedom. It's great to have you this morning. We are proud to be back on the Liberty Radio Network. We're also available via Ustream for those of you who would like to watch me and my weird fidgety hand motions all the time when I'm talking, including rubbing my nipples, which I do sometimes, apparently. Mm, yeah, you should check out that video. Um, what was it? Uh, the, physics the physics of, of gay super speed. Yeah, the physics of you gay get to super see speed. Dale rubbing his nipples. I was inspired by the X Men movie and the character Quicksilver, who is a, a gay uh, one of the characters on X Men who came out of the closet does in he the ha- comics. Does he have nipple caps? What kind of has some cool jacket stuff going on? But what's a nipple cap? I don't know. It helps you with your super speed. Anyway, I was rubbing my nipples <laughs> during that. I don't. I don't know why. Oh dear. It was just a fidgety thing. I couldn't explain it. Okay. Mm. That's me. There I go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So if oh, you're a yeah. podcast listener, you're you're better off right now. You, you, you're, yeah. you're, you're lucky. You're not watching us on the cam. They don't. This pay is me your host, Dale this. and Lauren and Jason. Thanks again for joining us, Jason. <laughs> Jason has been on some of our best shows ever, in my opinion. And yeah. So I just can't get enough of him. It's good to have you. He's a busy guy. It's hard to get him on uh, as much as we'd like. Uh, it's it's frustrating in general though because there's so many co-hosts that I really wish I could have on more, but we only do one show a week. Yeah, and and so there you go. By the way, submit a uh, submit your bio and picture to us. I know you've been we, telling me to yeah. do that. I got to do that. I'm trying to flesh out that page because we've had people ask for it. Like, they want my bio and picture. Yeah, they want. Well, they want to know about you. They want to be able to email you. And email me. Stuff. I'm making an email for you. What? So people can mail. Jason, Ooh. oh no, Jason Th- R at Flaming Things Freedom. could get dangerous, and that way, if you upset someone terribly, they can send you hate mail. That sounds good. I've never gotten hate mail. Please, I really please send I've, me hate mail. The closest I've gotten to hate mail for this show is someone was absolutely as a trans woman was absolutely furious with our name, Flaming Freedom. Yes, they said that I was making a horrible impression about gay people everywhere by having the name Flaming Freedom. What? And she was a trans woman. I don't. Yeah. Think. Was I, she? Was she gay? Was it the freedom or the flaming? I don't know if she was gay. It didn't come up. Which part was hmm. a problem? Or, or is it... <sighs> you know, I can't remember the details now. We talked about it on the show a while back. I can try to dig that up at some point. Well, you know, it, it certainly is used as a derogatory remark sometimes. Like, oh, yeah. you flamer, you. You know, it's... But it's, I don't think it's negative. Flaming is a description of people. But it represents... It kind of describes someone who is very outspoken. Yeah. And unashamed of who they are. I've heard gay dudes use and flaming I, a lot. I think that if if a person is that way and that's just their personality, then it's fine. It's totally awesome. That, you know, variety is the spice of life. Mm. If they're doing that just because they're attention whores, although I, like I've mentioned, I don't have. I'm not a big fan of attention whores. But if you're doing a show where says, you're trying to get people to listen to you on a regular say, basis, the man who runs the there's show. a little yeah. bit of hypocrisy there. I love attention whores. Yeah. Not really. No. You so know, I need to be careful. I guess I should be careful I, about getting on to attention whores. Because so we, we by, by nature of having a show where we're trying to get more listeners, are attention whores. I also think of flaming freedom in terms of uh, the word flaming. It's about, you know, flames are, they bring light. And that light is wisdom and knowledge. And you're, you're shedding light on things. And it plays into the whole idea of Prometheus that we were discussing last yes, week. The yeah. fire, so he brought fire to mortals. You know, it's about wisdom loved, and knowledge. Mortals, and he it's got not just about, for it. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so it is represents, and also Lucifer the Lightbringer, the whole notion oh, no. of, again, now before he this. was, before he, no, but no, no, Lucifer Lightbringer has nothing to do with Satan. Christians did that later. <laughs> uh, Lucifer was the, the, the morning star, the brightest star in the sky before the, before the sunrise. The last star you could still see from the light. It's actually Venus, the planet Venus. Oh, is it? Right. Lucifer is Venus. A lot of the brightest stars are actually planets because yeah, they they're closer and they look brighter. So does that mean Lucifer is a woman? But yeah, well, well yeah, uh, probably no, but uh, yeah. but but the, said the misogynist. Really? Yeah, but so some <laughs> it, it's as to who what religion that's actually associated with. It's very confusing because there's a lot of mingling and overlapping and well, because they're friggin' stuff. stars. Everybody's it, got something exactly. to say about them. Everybody has something to say about the stars. And Lucifer the Lightbringer refers to the morning star, and it really is the notion of enlightenment, bringing knowledge and enlightenment to humanity, all that stuff. Just like Mr. Peanut. Yes, uh, nice attempt <laughs> well, at a transition there. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 was really sad. 
<laughs> but no, if you look at a close up picture of this, I, I uh, there's a close up of Mr. Peanut, and it yes, it looks like is. he is wearing high heels and black stockings. Yeah, and his okay. his, his his feet are kind of coquettishly turned in, and he's yes. kind of twisted to the side like he's showing off his tush. He looks like he's golfing, actually. He does with his little cane. The, is fir- it, the I, first thing that I noticed is that it says zero trans fat. So even though Mr. Peanut <laughs> may be a cross-dresser, <laughs> Mr. Peanut is not trans it because was, there it's is a, no trans fat. It's well, actually a trans, subtle insult towards trans people saying zero trans. That's it's like true. zero tolerance towards trans people. The ACL, no. you should get on that. Yes. No, it means that he identifies as a cross-dresser. He identifies oh. as a male who dresses in tights and, and cute little shoes. and Zero trans. Yeah, but he's not trans. He's yeah. a cross-dresser. There's a, there's a difference sometimes, or most of the time. This is true. Yeah. Uh, Education, right there. Huh. There's a Reddit. It start, I discovered it on Reddit. Reddit is a total time waster. Don't go there. Okay. It's really bad. Okay. It, go ahead. So... so yeah. It, which in which direction is he cross dressing? Is it is it is he That's, dressing that was my or question. she? Or? Oh, what if he's a yeah. woman yeah. who yeah. likes to wear a is top he... hat and monocle and stuff? I mean, he actually, goes there's by tipping, Mr. tipping the velvet style, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Great first film. of all, plenty of women will wear a top hat. I mean, come on. It is. I mean, I guess it's thought of as a man's hat, but but it's not that big a deal for a woman to put a top hat on. She just With, put on especially a, a mo- if you're wearing like black leggings and black tights. His mm-hmm. arms are also look like they're wearing black tights. And he's got white gloves and high heel shoes. He could very well be a woman for, who's wearing a top hat and has her hair like up in the bun. Or, or and there's there. like a little window symbol on the side of his body, too. <laughs> I think yeah. those are the little impressions on the side of a peanut. Uh, well, definitely, if you look at like the, the underside of the, the nut there in between the legs, I mean, there's, there's nothing there, really. So, so it's, he's probably a woman. So I'm going to play a little bit of this. Of, of it's what? called Why Gays Should Be Libertarian. Oh. Oh. I have a beef with this video, and I'll get into that. Who is Let's this? Hear, this is Adam Kokesh. Okay, I haven't listened I, to him in a while. The title itself had me. I'm like, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. freedom is all about LGBT libertarians, right? So the title right away grabbed me. Let's listen to just a little bit of it. So you're gay. I'm jealous. As Seinfeld pointed out, if you start dating a guy the same size, you've just doubled your wardrobe. From what I can tell from your parades... Being gay is pretty fabulous. It seems like you have so much less to worry about, except for the hatred and the bigotry and the discrimination, of course. Speaking of which, I can understand the temptation to to turn to government for protection. It seems that most minority groups who experience some major social disadvantage are are ripe for the government protection racket. When I was in jail in D.C., I was doing outreach, obviously. By the way, jail's not so bad. Uh, Plenty of time to read, sleep, work out, meditate, fornicate. I told everyone why I was in jail. (laughs) All right, so he he goes on for a while talking about how the state has often been the actual perpetrators of uh, of discrimination and bullshit crap that the gays have to go through, right? Absolutely. I mean, Mm -hmm. this is, I agree. Uh, who's who is it that's been denying us marriages? The state. Why did they make marriage licenses in the first place Race. to deny racial interracial marriages? Right, somewhere in the 1920s, I believe, is when they got into the business of deciding you had to get a marriage license from the state. It used yeah. to be you'd go to your church and do it, it. Yeah, you know. And he goes on, and then let me just jump to the part that starts to tick me off. <laughs> okay. Um, we're, I have a link to it, and then, of course it's taking me too damn long to get to the damn link, but here we damn. go. Let's just jump to the part where he's ticking me off. So you're gay. <laughs> I'm jealous. Uh, that didn't As Seinfeld <laughs> pointed out, just, I, if I you start dating yeah. a guy the same size, you've... There we go. Whoop. ...marriage? What gives you the right to take my income to fund an institution of war and violence and exploitation and the police state so that you can have a piece of paper that says you're married? Are you kidding me? That's where I pissed off. Because this, again, is getting into that whole bullshit excuse. So you're thinking that he is anti-marriage in general. That's fine. I'm anti-government being involved in marriage. This is such a good topic. I am absolutely wanting government out of marriage. Mm. But in the mean, but but we'll talk about how do we do that and why is it pissing me off that he is against gay people wanting the government to stop discriminating on marriage. We'll talk about that when we come back. This is your host, Dale, on Flaming Freedom, where we talk about LGBT subjects from a libertarian perspective. We'll be right back, so stick around. 
Good morning, folks. You are listening to Flaming Freedom, LGBT libertarians shooting the poop here on the Liberty Radio Network. I encourage you to check our website, flamingfreedom.com. If you're listening to us via a downloaded podcast right now, you can listen to us live next week from 10 a.m. until noon via the Liberty mm. Radio Network, or you can watch us on Ustream. The link is on the left side of our pit website, flamingfreedom.com. You can also check us out on Facebook, Google+, Diaspora, Twitter, and YouTube. That's way too much stuff to keep up with. But you can find all of it from flamingfreedom.com if you're at all confused. I would also like to remind everyone that you can call in and share your thoughts with us, either on a subject we're talking about, or you can change the subject via Skype. Just Skype to In Your Head Shows, and if you don't have a Skype account, you can make one for free, so you can call us. This is your host, Dale. And Lauren. Jason. Welcome back. As I said, we were just talking about something. Adam Kokesh and his, <laughs> why libertarians, why gay people should be libertarian. And I agree with him. Gay people should be libertarian. There are a lot of good reasons for that. He uh, makes some analogies. For instance, he mentions that the drug war is racist. We should be trying to end the drug war. Right. And if you are someone who is a minority, particularly Hispanic or black, that the drug war is really stacked against you. Yeah. He doesn't go into a lot of detail about that. But for that's, instance... That's pretty well covered ground. Yeah. I mean, besides the fact that you're probably going to be targeted on the basis of racial profiling, if you're a completely law-abiding black person driving a car who's, especially if you're younger, you're a lot more likely to get pulled over and... Just find they're gonna find something to pull you over for so they can try and sniff out marijuana. Versus lots of white people who smoke marijuana but don't get targeted necessarily. All in the, the same time. Way. But another one, another one, for instance, is the fact that crack and cocaine are almost exactly the same. They are in fact the same. Drug. Are they? they do the same things. Have you tried but them? Crack is um, considered a has much harsher penalties, and crack is a more common drug, for instance, in say low income urban communities where a lot more black people are more likely to be again be targeted and be charged with a much harsher crime versus the white collar drug of cocaine right i've had cocaine i've never had crack they're 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 the same really yeah they oh, are. i gotta try some crack because um, cocaine was the, great well the ingestion method can be, <laughs> can be different though so like the, depending on how you ingest things right. there's a different level in which it will release into your bloodstream and and there's, it's a it's a but complicated it is thing. quite a reach to charge ridiculously higher penalties for crack when in fact that's uh, more commonly used by black people for instance it's considered more of a street drug versus cocaine which is a white collar criminal drug right yeah and it's another area in which the, the, the drug war is racist. So here, here's an analogy I want to make. Adam Kokesh sounds very accusatory in this. Like, for gay people to dare to ask for the government to stop discriminating in their issuance of marriage mm. licenses. So here's my thought. Well, for one thing, it's very idealistic, which is fine. I, I'm, I'm an idealist on, a, on at least a certain level. <laughs> I understand that. But we also live in the world that we live in and unless you're being a martyr, we're, some of us are just trying to get on with our lives. Yeah. And the, until the government is tanked, which who knows how long that's going to take, we have to deal with the fact that the government intrudes into our lives in a number of ways. And the ways that they intrude into our lives are affected by whether or not we are married and whether or not people that we are with are in fact considered part of our family or not. If I'm married, for instance, to a Mexican, let's say who doesn't have citizenship in the U.S., uh, but it's not legally recognized by the government, now I've got INS agents that are constantly trying to get my spouse kicked out of the country. So, yeah, I'm all for fighting them and saying stop doing that and, and trying to end that kind of thing. And the first, Trying to end immigration bullshit, for instance. I'm all for ending that stuff. But that's going to take a while. In the meantime, I'd like for my spouse to not get kicked out of the country. So I feel like Adam Kokesh... Is he's one of these people, like I said, who's a knee jerk activist who's very idealistic and is calling on people to be martyrs. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not necessarily, not everyone wants to be a martyr for the, not everyone is an activist for liberty. And some people want to get on with their lives. And that's a reasonable thing to expect of people. And in the meantime, they want the government to not kick their spouse out of the country. They want the government to not tax them more versus someone else who can get married and be taxed less, depending on their particular household arrangement, like one of them is a wage earner, for instance, one of them is a housekeeper or, or, or a homemaker, right? That sort of arrangement is very tax expensive if the government does not recognize you as a part, as partnership. So I'm all for getting the government out of marriage, but to do that, 
we got to get them out of Social Security. We got to get them out of. Uh, we got to end this graduated tax system that is that really fucks you over if you're a married couple where one works and makes a lot of money and one either makes no money or very little. For instance, you get a tax penalty. So he's asking me to subsidize him. I thought you. I thought you I, paid if, less taxes if you got married. It depends. It really depends on your situation. Some people pay less and some people pay mm. more. You can actually get you can actually get taxed more by being married in some situations, but 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 that's a that's obviously personal choice, right? It's my choice whether or not I get married to someone, and that's a personal contract. That's yeah. two consenting adults entering into a contract. The only question is, does the government recognize and acknowledge that as a valid contract? Mm-hmm. Well, the re- I mean, and right now they issue marriage licenses, right? But which means that they don't recognize and acknowledge all those contracts. And I think the libertarian position is that they should acknowledge and recognize the contracts that people make with each other yeah. as valid contracts. Uh, well, I mean, part of the reason the government's so concerned about regulating marriage is because also on the other side of the equation, the marriage court, the family court system, is one of the biggest parts of the judicial system. Like, the majority of their revenue comes through the family and marriage courts. It's They make oh. so much money through that. And if you can't regulate the front end of a marriage license, there's less you can say about the back end, right? When people want to break I hadn't, up I hadn't again. I thought about that. Yeah, yeah that, that's certainly true. It's a huge racket from um, beginning to end. Well, here's so, the thing. But, if if we think that oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Laura. Oh no, it's okay. Um, just to, to get back to the root of the issue. I mean, we're 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 saying that Adam Kokesh is being very idealistic here, and I think that's okay. I think you should strive for that. Like, right? There's I do too. We, I strive for the yeah, ideal situation. We sort of are before the but break, in the meantime, <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I sort of said that there were there were like three tiers of what would be best. Like the the best case scenario is government does not exist. Oh yeah, and yeah. she's are, not right. libertarian. Uh, and my point, my no, position, no, that real quick, real quick, my position is that you won't get government out of marriage until it ex- stops existing, because yes. it, it's yes. yeah. it, a marriage affects so many things yeah. that the government is into. Yeah. until you get them out of Social Security, until yeah. you end immigration uh, enforcement, until you end health care, until you end education, um, edu- uh, all these things, taxation, yeah. the graduated income tax, which is a Marxist all notion of, it is of touched taxation. by marriage. All of that, all marriage of that affects touches all marriage, of that. So until you get them out of all that, know. you can't get government out of marriage. Yeah. And some of us want to live in the meantime. Go ahead, Lauren. So I think we all agree with Adam that that's the best case scenario. But I think your point is also var- valid as sort of a secondary, um, okay, so government does exist. Therefore, if more people can get married, that's a greater increase in the amount of things that you can do. Therefore, greater increase in freedom. Like, this is something, if everyone could get married, everyone has the freedom and ability and option to get married, then that's helpful. That's useful to them. And yeah. um, it's more practical. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the bottom tier is only this one group can get married and no one else is allowed to. Like, that's right. not what we want. Well, so I, I think it's really like a, a multiple tiered system. Yeah. Adam is, uh, is ultimately an idealist, though. Right. Right. Exactly. And I, and also gets into whether you would believe in incrementalism. Right in the meantime, and things like that, or whether that will be better versus keeping everything really bad until we're all over. Flaming Freedom will be back very shortly, so stick around. Thanks. Thank you for sticking with us, folks. You are, folks, you are listening to Flaming Freedom on the Liberty Radio Network. We're here every Sunday from 10 a.m. to noon. Hopefully, you'll join us live next week if you're listening to the download podcast right now. You can also watch us via Ustream. Go to flamingfreedom.com and click on the left side of the page. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Diaspora, and YouTube. So you should be subscribed to us in all those places. Go around and just click everything. Click it. Click it. Click it. Yeah, you'll hear my little promo. It says, just look. Just If you don't want to donate money, if you don't want to do anything drastic, just click. It doesn't take much, right? It doesn't take much to go click, click. Click like. My Click mouse, share. My mouse broke, Dale. I can't do it. Yeah, my finger got cramps. I can't. It's too much work to do. I know you spend like 12 hours a week working on this show for no money, but I can't be bothered to click like and share. I can't be bothered. I need to like and share more. Bastards. I'm bad about that. I'm a bastard. Yeah, you are. <laughs> You're actually here uh, for two hours helping us out, so That's I'm not going to call you a bastard. Yeah. I'm going to retract that in your case. 
But I, you should, you should. You I should told my friends on the West Coast about it. They, you put all this. Here's the thing: you're putting all this effort into it. Me and Lauren, of course, we do. You're putting all this effort into it. You should want to click like and share so that your efforts are are recognized. Yeah, make sure you do check to make sure you like it because I didn't know that I didn't like it. I'm pretty and now sure I, I know like that it. I like it. <laughs> I had to send. I sent her a like invitation. I was like, wait, of course I like this. I didn't know you could invite someone to like something. I did. Uh, I saw that, so I did it. And and I was like, Lauren doesn't like playing freedom. And I see. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Wait. we're talking about Adam Kokesh, and yes. he's pissing me off a little bit. I like Adam Kokesh, by the way, in general. I, this is not a general criticism of Kokesh, but this one video, I have my criticisms, and uh, listen to me, Kokesh, uh, you need to retract that. And then what bugs me about it is he's very accusatory, like, oh, you gay people, how dare you ask the government to stop discriminating against you when we should be trying to get the government out of marriage? And this is uh, this is what I, I guess he has a, a viewpoint, and he has an all-or-nothing viewpoint. He doesn't have an incrementalism right. viewpoint. You're welcome to whatever your viewpoint is, but don't be accusatory of people who are just trying to live their lives and have the government stop fucking with them as much. You know, in the meantime, until the government collapses, I'd like them to fuck with me less. Is that so much for me to ask? And when he says, you gay people, you're, you're asking me to subsidize your marriages. Guess what, fucking Adam Kokesh? <laughs> We're subsidizing the hell out of straight marriages, and we have no choice about that matter. And meanwhile, if we get married and the government doesn't acknowledge that contract, which is a private contract, it's really none of their business, but they choose whether or not they want to consider it to be valid or not. And I think as a libertarian, you should believe that the government should acknowledge and consider as valid the contracts that people make with each other, marriage being one of them. If they don't acknowledge that, we get fucked over hard. Sometimes INS agents bust into our homes to kick our spouse out of the country where they don't do that to your spouse, if you get married and the government acknowledges your marriage, they won't do that to you. And here's the other thing. We're talking about incrementalism. You may not believe that incrementalism is good for liberty. What is Some incrementalism? People do. Incrementalism is, for instance, like if, if, for instance, the government stopped, dec decriminalized marijuana, that would be a step in the direction of ending the drug war, would it not? Yeah. Some people think that's a bad thing. They say, oh, no, no, we want them to be evil as possible until the whole thing just collapses, until everyone becomes an anarchist. Right. And I think that's a very, I mean, it's, 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 uh, that's a huge gamble you're asking people to take. You're asking people to be miserable for however long it takes until the government completely collapses. And, and you're essentially <laughs> asking them to like go to war against the government. Not, yeah, not maybe not in a of, violent way, of. but certainly from a spiritual ha 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 yeah. kind of way. Yeah. I the, said the fact is, I don't know how long government's going to be around. I, I mean, it's been around a very long time and I haven't seen a, it, like a, a massive, chunk of the population suddenly become anarchists. I'm Go an anarchist, by the way. Government ain't I, going I nowhere. It, ain't, it may not go anywhere for a long time. In the meantime, I'd like to live my life. And for him to accusatorily say that the gay people are making it worse because we want the government to stop discriminating with regard to the contracts that it acknowledges. Here's the thing. If the government were going to make the drug war less racist, would that not be good? Right. But in the you, meantime, you know, I want the drug war over. On the other hand, I think that uh, I think the world needs people like Kokesh saying inflammatory things like that for the exact same reason that you like to say you're a Satanist <laughs> when you're just oh. an atheist because it oh, wakes sure. up That's the an Christian. Point. And oh, sure. Shakes I'm sure a lot of, of people there, have right? become an anarchist because Kokesh has said something that made them think about something yeah. differently. And kudos to him for that. He deserves kudos for that. Yeah. That's fine. What I want to say to Kokesh. That my main criticism is don't be accusatory. Don't be, uh, don't act like, don't treat gay people as being selfish because they want to, the government to stop discriminating against them. He's right. The, the worst culprit for discrimination throughout history, when it comes to racism, there, there were laws that said restaurants could not. Yeah. They had to segregate. Restaurants, there are a lot of restaurants that didn't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. The bus segregations that Rosa That's Parks all government protested. Run buses. That was government laws yeah. making them do that. The, the bus company didn't want to do it. Oh, no, the government does all this yeah. stuff. How is it not a good thing when we get the government to stop discriminating? That's a step in the right direction. And here's my here specifically with regard to gay marriage. Getting government at, uh, to stop discriminating with regard to marriage as a when it comes to same-sex couples is absolutely a step in the direction of getting government out of marriage. You want to know why? When the Christians and the religious right and the social conservatives that's a fairly redundant thing to say. When those people realize they no longer have a stranglehold on marriage and they can't use it to enforce their agenda, 
they will be on board with getting government out of marriage. Think about that, Adam Kokesh. Maybe. If we get the government to, like, completely... They already started. A lot of states are already doing it. The federal government is already acknowledging the states who decided to stop discriminating. And so you can now get a federally recognized marriage if your state allows you to get married. If we get this consistently across the board, and and Christians and religious right and social conservatives realize that they no longer control marriage... At that point, they were like, get the government the yeah. freaking out but, of marriage. But on the they other hand, be on board with us. to play the devil's advocate or the Adam's advocate uh-huh. uh, is uh, if you do if you do have the incrementalism with the gay marriage, then, you know, then then homosexuals who might have leaned anarchist or against the government can turn around and say, well, look, it worked. We changed the laws. We changed the government. Who says we can't continue to do this with other issues? So why shouldn't I keep voting and supporting the system? Because it worked for me. Huh? That I mean, that's what I think our Adam's argument might be, which I also have a hard time. I mean, it's a good point. I don't know. Okay. Sorry, I was trying to do something else. I know. I, yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's... A- I, I, something was coming up on my screen that I had to deal with, and I missed a lot of that. Right? I, I, I so I agree a- with you, uh, Jason. <laughs> I, I think it's a great said. point, though, that... <laughs> it's so bad. I didn't listen. I'm a horrible uh, listener. So essentially, some people will think that I'm just, you can change a- government to make it smaller yeah. or be... You know, I- I they may saying- call themselves a minarchist or something like that. Do you think anyone could, eventually- would donate our fir- their firstborn to us to, mo- to handle all the technical stuff? Yeah, and, that one woman did, didn't she? And the she? mixer. Over the... <laughs> yeah, but she took, we him gone, there was some... she took him back. Oh, she took him back. She didn't like how I was treating him. Oh. And she took him back. So now we don't have a little a little kid to handle our did mixer. Did you feed him? Because if I didn't bacon? have to handle all this technical stuff, I could focus better in listening to you guys. That's okay. I and don't engaging listen to in the me conversation. Anyway. But I have to check the cameras and and the mixer and the compressor. It's a hard job sitting in that seat. Carry on, Lauren. I, I interrupted you. Oh, I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> ha ha ha. No, I. I wh- what know, are we even talking about right now? Um, I'm thinking about audio equipment gay marriage. at this point. Children sound mixers, I think. Gay yeah. marriage. We're back to child slavery, which is also something I support. Gay marriage. Alongside and- homosexual <laughs> marriage. Um, I support child labor, but I don't support child slavery. Two great slavery. things that go great together. Gay marriage and child slavery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Dale's like, what are you trying to, what are you doing to my show? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I love I know, it. Earlier I love today, it. Earlier today, well, what, what did you say? You said he he's going to... Just because we're libertarians doesn't mean we're against child slavery. Come on. Yeah. Oh dear. Don't be don't be ridiculous. <laughs> you don't want to get carried away with the non-aggression principle. Somebody's right? got somebody's got to make the gravel. <laughs> no. So I'm going to say <laughs> this one kids, more time. You need kids to be able to reach into the missile casings, and they need small hands. Uh, it's true. And to chocolate. get into the missile chocolate, casings. Uh, chil- young children are necessary for chocolate production in Africa. Oh. Yeah. So if yeah. you like chocolate, you hate children. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta. You can't make an omelet without breaking some I, eggs. I'm actually really intrigued by this as someone who likes chocolate. So, and but Jason I'll have to, is actually his family is in the chocolate business, so uh, he knows what he's talking about. Hey guys, I have to run, but it's been a pleasure being with you tonight. Lauren will be back with us next week, so thank you, Lauren, for joining us. And Thanks, that's guys. quite all right. See you, Lauren. All right, folks, you're listening to Flaming Freedom, where we talk about LGBT subjects from a libertarian perspective. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back to Flaming Freedom, LGBT Libertarians Shooting the Poop. Actually, we're only one-third LGBT mm. at the moment. Carlos, who Hi. you've seen on the show before, has decided to step in for Lauren, who had to take off and do work stuff. So we're only one-third LGBT right now, and that's me. And I have two token straight guys on, which is fine. You guys, uh, we, 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 uh, you I'm guys, bored this opinions, way, so. You your know. opinions are almost as valuable as uh, almost. LGBT folks. Almost. So it's okay. So, um, someone, uh, wrote an article, and I love this article. Just, just furious. <laughs> this is on Ethropology. Repo- What's that mean? I don't know, honestly. Okay. That's it's, what it's called. But it's, we're going to link to it so you can go and check out the article yourself. But there's a meme out there that is actually bullshit and it's that broccoli has more protein than steak <laughs> it's simply not true first of all but then even if you look at <laughs> right it's it's bullshit sorry we this talked about a, it before and i still when you say it out loud this is, <laughs> this is vegetarians and vegans trying to spread their stupidity Ugh. like a virus to other people this is uh vegetarianism and veganism is a religion 
there are people, it works, it's so much like religion. Let's look at some of the parallels, okay? Mm. Uh, there, first of all, they're married to an idea, yeah. and a lot of it is guilt-based, they, yeah. right? They feel guilty, a lot of it and is, they're yeah. trying to atone for their sins. They, feel, they look at cute animals, <laughs> mostly cute animals. If they're not as cute, it doesn't bother them as much. But some people are, you know... Then they All try animals to, are cute. If I would, you're a good I would, vegan. I would certainly though separate vegetarians and vegans in this particular case because oh, like, yeah. vegetarians can go like at least eggs, things like that. Veganism yeah. is you moralistic can... as fuck because they're hungry. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. If you're a vegan, hungry. you're really uh, struggling to f- get enough protein to get yeah. the things you need. I mean, you can in theory do it, but. They probably just get grumpy. When I was a vegetarian, I was what they call a cheese sandwich vegetarian. I did not eat healthy. I was oh, not vegan, but I remember. I grew I did, up. I, I I substituted for meat a lot of unhealthy things. I was raised vegetarian and often on vegan a lot of my um a lot of my childhood, and I'd see other that kids as so I get much. into high school and college, and I see young girls who are converting to veganism or vegetarians. And I was raised well; like we had a very balanced diet, good vegetarians. Okay, and I'd wa- and I was like, "Are you kidding me? Like, why are you like you're eating s- like yeah? It's it's ramen right. and uh, and and grilled cheese. Yeah. Well, that's right. I mean, it's like it's, it's, you, mac you can and cheese. Eat, you can eat. I don't know if you can eat healthy as a vegan, honestly. As a you vegetarian, can. It's you hard, can. Though. But you need to make some effort. No, and if you um, want to go out to eat and everything, then you're shot. I mean, that's the problem. Like, depending on how often you go out to eat and everything, trying to eat healthy and also go out where, you're, where your choices are limited and things, it's very challenging. I did. I lived as a vegetarian for three years. To get the it was full very balance of minerals and proteins. Well, and, no, here's the thing also. Cholesterol is actually really good for your brain. You cannot get that outside mm, of animal matter. Right? So you have cholesterol, choline, vitamin B12, taurine, creatine. Mm-hmm. Right? Those yeah. are five pretty great things for your brain yeah. as a whole. Saturated fats are also really beneficial, and you can get some of that in a vegan diet. For instance, coconut oil and things like that. But like, uh, you know, quagin, uh, what is it, CLAs, those kind of things, those kind of good fats, you don't really get those. And the thing is, is what they always do is they always compare vegan diet to standard American diet, which, which is, is also shit. Which oh, is a yeah, crappy that's also diet. Shit. Sure. So yeah. that's how all those studies go, right? Full of gr- so yeah. what they did was they, they tested Seventh-day Adventists versus Mormons, right, in order mm. to really tell... Which side is actually healthier, right? Because Mormons also don't drink. They also have strong community. Strong community is one of the best building blocks for long-term longevity, right? And they find the Mormons are actually healthier than the Seventh-day Adventists, who are mostly just vegetarian, almost vegan in in particular cases. Now, I do think there is maybe a little bit over meat consumption in, like, the United States— I think that's part of the veganist reaction is they see the culture and they and that's what gets them so upset about things. Well, the, the, the point is there's an incredible bias. There's a, an incredible guilt attached to this. A lot of this is, oh, I don't want to eat the cute animals. I understand that. Uh, so, we are omnivores. Are that's the most how we evolved to be. It's what the most healthy diet we can be on. And and it's twisting all this information out there to to favor what you want to believe and one of this example is broccoli has more protein than steak, which is simply not true. They're using like really, really old data that wasn't accurate to support this. And actually, modern data, if you look at it, broccoli, they, they do it calorie for calorie, by the way. Broccoli is almost all bulk and water. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then there's, so, if you, so you have to, you know, to compare them, like 100 calories of broccoli versus 100 calories of steak is a lot of broccoli, more than anyone ever eats in a sitting. Right versus you can eat four ounces of steak and not feel bloated and get a tremendous amount of nutritional value out of that versus eating like nine and a quarter cups of broccoli, which is the equivalent amount of calories roughly. I, Cha- um, I it's something like that. Cha- in the article. Changing the subject slightly, have you ever had horse meat? Yes. Horse meat is delicious. It's sweet. It totally actually it actually meat. still contains glycogen. You know the sugar in there. It's uh-huh. like the only animal you can eat that still has that. Oh, I didn't know that. In there, which makes it that sweet, delicious taste. Really, it I've tastes o- like sugary venison. I'm, I I've only try it now. yeah, I've only yeah. had it as a burger in Slovenia, and so it was ground. Um, but it had Horses, yeah, it was kind of sweet, and um, it was kind of chewy. It had a, a nice al dente. Kind of texture. Horses are stupider than plants, by the way. So if you have a moral objection, I can't ride. They're fucking stupid. I can't ride cauliflower. Okay, right. Horses are dumb as rocks. But But you should not have any moral objection to eating horses. I know they're pretty, and uh, some women have sexual. I brought it up simply to to inflame vegans. Oh, okay. And, and all that. So, and broccoli, like nine and a quarter cups of broccoli is equivalent to about four ounces of steak. This guy compares nine the amino and a quarter acids. Cups. This guy compares the amino acids in them, not just protein. Good man. Okay, if you eat enough broccoli to to the equivalent to four ounces of steak, it's like nine cups and something. Because it's broccoli again is all bulk and water. So you'd have to eat a tremendous amount of broccoli. I ate about I, I trying to be healthy. I made a point to eat a bowl of broccoli every day for mm. about a week. Mm. My gas. 
Why don't you and just, bloating was disastrous. Why just broccoli? Why don't you vary it up with other vegetables? I was, There's I was all busy. Sorts of delicious vegetables. I was busy, and no, I just wanted. I'm, it was like medicine for me. I was just taking my medicine. I was just bore, I was just steaming it, putting some like salt on it, and just shoveling it down. I love vegetables. And I was the smog monster from Godzilla. No, yeah, I, I would fly over people and release my gas, <clears throat> and they were dissolved into skeletons. Yeah. It was disastrous. Like I just, and that's just a bowl a day. <clears throat> they they want you to eat. Uh, they talk about broccoli. Oh, if you eat the same amount of calories of broccoli as four ounces of steak, you'll get more protein. It isn't. It's less protein, actually. But even if we just buy that for a moment, you'd be eating like nine cups of broccoli, which would be a, 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 a gynecological, no, not gynecological, <laughs> gastrological, gastrointestinal. No, it would be gonna, a gastrointestinal disaster. It's a gynecological. Okay. It actually hurts your vagina. Yeah. In fact, no, you actually become a vagina if you become a vegan. <laughs> you get vagina sores all over your entire body. Wait, are you calling vegans pussies? Because I'm on board if that's what you're yeah, yeah, that's I'm okay with that. that. Really, really angry ones, though. The very, very like, angry yeah. vaginas. That's because I, I really, they don't get enough uh, well, no, minerals and proteins It's because they actually think vitamins. you're killing humans. Look, like, I they don't... put animals and they put animals and they put, which we are animals, right? But Look, I'm team people, right? So I put yeah. people above I'm, I'm fucking speciesist. chickens. I'm a speciesist. Yeah, I'm totally I'm a speciesist. speciesist. I, I believe in human I like beings lamb. over animals. So if I believe that you are repeatedly killing humans, I would treat you like shit. I'd be like, yeah. I don't want to hang out with you, right? Yeah. So if they put the equivalent of, well, then it kind of makes sense that they're really mad. Yeah. But they're not. Here's the thing, though. The evolution, every single animal species in the world except for humans is out for number one. They're out for themselves. That, I'm not saying they're, they're out to survive and perpetuate their genes. And I'm a speciesist because that's Darwinism. That's evolution. I'm looking out for number mm -hmm. one, human beings, and me in particular. Sorry. I believe in a healthy, diverse biosphere. I'm going to eat it. I, I, like, I have fantasies. Like, I have dreams at night where I'm chasing down. Like, I'm a predator, and I'm chasing down animals, and I grab it, and I grab my teeth, and I shake it, and I just shake it in my teeth. Like, Arr! You have Arr! dreams? And I taste the blood, and I get in a boner, <laughs> and I wake up with a boner, and I jack off. Really? No. That's, I'm so jealous. I wish I had dreams like that. That would be. <laughs> I have dreams where I'm playing D and D and stuff. That's horrible. <laughs> like, what a horrible dream. Or I actually, or last no, no, night I dreamed you know, I was playing Angry Birds. I always <laughs> have these dreams. Playing that recently. It's the worst thing ever. I have these dreams where I'm about to have sex. I never get to have sex. It's like other dreams where I'm punching someone and it just goes right through them. It doesn't do anything. Uh, it's because I have fears of impotence. I'm guessing. Yeah. Like that sounds like fears of that, impotence. Those, yeah. Both of those sound like. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. I box for like eight years, but every single dream, it's like I, I don't even know how to. I'm just like. <laughs> I still get Punch stage like fright dreams, and I haven't acted in, in years and years and years. <laughs> They're the worst. Let's get back to picking on vegans, though. Yeah, I definitely. don't know if we've offended them enough yet. Well, like, if you're, uh, have, let's just be straightforward. If you're a vegan, you're fucktarded. Yeah, I mean, if you need... Don't do it. It's not good for you. Nine oh, and a half man. cups of broccoli to four <laughs> ounces of steak. How much veal? I mean, I bet you only need two ounces of veal for those nine and a half cups of broccoli. I love veal. Yeah, I just yeah. yeah I you, like know what's a veal you know what's coincident? Veal hearts. I saw those in the grocery store yesterday. Basket, I almost, yeah. I almost you know, bought co them. Coincidentally, uh, <laughs> I, I posted this subject and this article on our show prep for today, and then after that, we got linked by Fathead. You know the Fathead movie. Yeah. They found my comic. Uh, the, or the guy who made Fathead found my comic and posted it, reposted it on his blog. What's Fathead? Oh, it's dude, a, it's a it's a documentary that you need to watch. We oh. need to get it's him a on. Very educational. We could really totally good. get him on like a Google Hangout or something. You think? Tom, you think he'd want to be He's on. He's not that busy. He's not that. Busy. He's awesome. <laughs> I, I'm a big fan. I would totally want love to have him on if he wants to be on. Um, he did get, get a lot. He got my comic a lot of attention that I made uh, about his movie, and he had a very positive response as well as his listeners. All right, folks, this has been Dale. Carlos. And Jason. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to join us next week, 10 a.m. to noon on the Liberty Radio Network. This has been Flaming Freedom. And check out truthovercomfort.net. Yes, definitely. That's Carlos's site.